Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and in this video I will show you how to draw on an iPad in Zoom. I'll show you how to operate the controls on the iPad and what the share screen looks like for someone viewing the meeting on a computer. Now, I do have a more general tutorial about how to use Zoom on an iPad, but I have been getting a lot of requests for more specific tutorials in the comments, so in this one we're just going to talk about using the whiteboard feature. If I get more questions and requests in the comments, I can do other more specific tutorials about Zoom on the iPad as well. So let's get started. I am in a meeting that just has the iPad and the laptop in it, and I have both cameras off so you don't have to look at a video of me, although you can kind of see my reflection here. And to share your screen from the iPad and use the whiteboard feature, you're going to need to tap the screen and then select Share Screen up here at the top. Click the Share Screen button, and then from the options that pop up, right now we're only going to look at the whiteboard feature. So again, I might do another video covering these other ones. For now, select Whiteboard, and that is going to bring up a virtual whiteboard that you can draw on just using your finger or a stylus. So, now for me, it defaulted to a yellow color on the thinnest line setting, which I think is kind of hard to see, but there are a bunch of controls down here at the bottom that you can use to adjust the color and thickness of the pen and do some other things. So, these controls might be collapsed at first, so you only see the pen, the eraser, and the color, but you hit this little arrow over to the right. That is going to give you options to change the color, so say I'm going to switch over to blue and change the thickness of the line, so I'm going to change over to the thickest setting. And now you see I get a much, much thicker line. There are a couple other options here, so there is a highlighter option. This is going to give kind of a semi-transparent look that you can use to highlight other things. We'll show more about that in a minute. And you can also type text, so if you click the T icon, click you, where you would like to add text on the screen, blah, blah, blah. It's then going to let you add text, which you can change the size of, and change the color. So that's interesting, it auto-corrected, so it looks like auto-correct does work for the Zoom built-in text. I thought I was trying to type fought there. And over here you can see this pile of gibberish I've drawn at what it looks like on a laptop screen. One thing to note though, I'm holding the iPad in portrait orientation, and that means for users on a computer, they're going to see this in portrait orientation as well, so they're going to get these black bars on the sides. If you would like to see them, for them to see it full screen in landscape orientation, you need to rotate your iPad to landscape orientation, but if you do that after you've started drawing in portrait, it's going to be messed up. So you see how everything got cut off here and you can't really scroll around this diagram at all. It just rotated it and cut it off. So if you want people viewing on a computer, so say example, you're teaching a class, most of your students are going to be watching on a computer at home, as opposed to their own tablet in portrait orientation, make sure you rotate to landscape first and then start drawing. So if you mess that up and want to start over, down here in the lower right, there is a little trash can icon. You can click that to select clear my drawing. That's going to clear everything you've drawn. Notice there were other options there for clearing others' drawings. If you have the setting enabled such that participants can also annotate, then your students would also be able to draw on the screen you could choose to just clear what they've drawn and not what you've drawn. Let's look at a couple more controls real quick here. So there is a laser pointer button. So this one there, if you click that and point on the screen, it will make a little red dot that you can see on the computer over there that you can use to point at things, but it does not draw anything. There is a select tool, this little box icon there that you can use to click and drag to select something you've drawn and then move it around the screen. And there is this highlighter thing, so if I select that, I'm going to pick a different color this time to show how that works better. When I draw over this blue line here, you can see that it's kind of translucent and appears behind it as opposed to covering it up like it would if I drew over it with a pen. And finally, you can create multiple whiteboards using this little plus icon in the lower right, so I'm not sure if there's a limit, but you can create a whole bunch of those, and then click this icon to select and toggle between them. So you can see I've got the one I already drew on there and two new blank ones that I just created. So you can select to switch between those and they are not saved automatically, but if you would like to save one, you hit the little three dot icon in the bottom right and click save to photos. So if you have a bunch of notes you've drawn for a class or something and you wanna save that image to distribute to the students later, make sure you save it. And I lied, one more thing, if you do want to see your participants' videos while you're doing this, so I had this collapsed already, but there's this little blue camera icon down here in the bottom right, 
that will pop up, pop up the participant thumbnails, and I believe you can drag that around. No, I guess not, you can't drag that around. There is a plus icon where you can expand it to see everyone. If you hit the minus icon, then it's going to shrink the whole thing so you can toggle between how much space you want that to take up on the screen, but if you are really using the whole screen for drawing, then you probably just wanna minimize that, hit the little minus icon in the corner, and that will shrink it down to just this blue button. Okay, well, as always, I hope you found that useful. If you have a comment, a question, or a suggestion for another tutorial, please leave a comment below this video. Again, I have been getting a lot of more specific comments about iPads, so I am happy to do more specific videos about that if there's enough demand for them. Thank you.